But when you think about the most important elements of understanding of neuroscience and of general areas, we look at mirror neurons, we look at uh, the awareness of brain plasticity, uh, and memory reconsolidation is absolutely in that framework of, of importance because uh, I just constantly found that no one had the faintest idea of what they were doing when a client felt better or had a shift in idea or shift of thought. And suddenly this thing came along. And Now, how long have you been looking at this work, Bruce? This is, this is not yesterday. This is quite a few years. No, I've been looking at memory reconsolidation research since I first came across it in 2005. Yeah. And since then, I really reoriented uh, to it largely in my clinical career. So I've been following the laboratory research very closely. I've read, uh, you know, probably about 200 or more primary research articles, really trying to master the findings. Um, and that's been my, my emphasis. Uh, is sticking very close to what the, the, the findings are telling us, as distinct from bringing our preconceptions from the therapy world to bear on how we conceptualize the process of change. And what I'm encountering consistently as I teach and give presentations about memory reconsolidation is that more and more therapists have heard about it and see it as something you know, of fundamental importance for the therapy field. Uh, but many therapists uh, have, seem to have the impression that the memory reconsolidation research has done no more than confirm that the brain does have a process for fundamentally updating any previous learnings that are now carried in memory. We now know indeed, I mean, that's, that's true as far as it goes. That is the, the broadest way of describing what the reconsolidation research has shown. The brain can fundamentally sort of unlock its stored version of any particular learning, and I think we'll probably get into what we mean by learnings um, in a few minutes. Uh, and, <clears throat> excuse me, and rewrite, re-encode, uh, fundamentally revise what has been learned and change it, uh, even to the point of, as many neuroscientists term it, erasing it. Now, that doesn't mean erasing memory of what happened in your life. It means erasing what you took the events in your life to mean. For example, just a really quick example to put that on some solid ground. Uh, I once had a client who didn't realize it when he started therapy, but it became conscious for him uh, that he learned the only way to get any attention is to do something really bad. Now, He's not know, conscious of this learning, right? Not conscious at all. Yeah. It's what we call implicit learning. Mm. The emotional learning system learns things without words or concepts, and yet they are very well defined. So he uh, became aware that this was what he learned. It wasn't an interpretation for me. Uh, the methods I use bump the client into their own emotional learnings in a way that pulls them into awareness. So he had this whole body felt knowing, whoa, that's my emotional truth. That is what I learned, and that's why I don't call my wife when I'm going to be home late, and I told her I'd be home at 6 o'clock, and I see I'm going to overshoot, but I don't call her. And now I'm in touch with why. You know, I, don't, I, I, I do that kind of stuff. I get people annoyed with me when I'm actually hurting for, when I'm feeling too alone, and I'm wanting a solid dose of attention, and that's how I know to get attention. I do something naughty, bad get the other person upset with me, and then I get a real strong dose of attention. Uh, so that's an emotional learning. Now, the reconsolidation process can uh, take that piece of learning, unlock its neural encoding, and rewrite it and even erase it. I helped that fellow bring into his awareness right alongside that specific learning some experiences he'd had that he'd never put alongside it because it had been unconscious. He couldn't, couldn't put anything different alongside it. 
with it uh, outside of awareness. But now it's in awareness, and I guided him to bring alongside it several important experiences where people important to, to him had given him high-quality attention and caring without him first doing something really bad. And as he held all that in one field of awareness, like, you know, yeah, I could see his eyes blinking as he was, his brain was making new sense of reality. Like, wait a minute, it doesn't always have to work that way. Mm. And it, it rewrote it. Uh, a few sessions later, when I had him try to reconnect with and re-inhabit, re-drop into that formerly very uh, palpable, compelling piece of reality, the only way to get any attention is to do something really bad. It wasn't there anymore. It didn't feel real. When I had him try to feel it and, and say it again in, the, in those words, he, he said it just, it, feels, it seems sort of silly now. Yeah. Why, why, would I, why would I see it that way? That's a marker, by the way, when the client no longer can feel it and it actually starts to seem silly or absurd or just unreal. That's one of the markers that successful transformation or nullification or erasure of the target learning has taken place. Well, if you want to know more about the science of psychotherapy, come across to our website, thescienceofpsychotherapy.com, and our podcast of the same name, and learn more about the science of you.